Hi, friends. Continuing with the Pat McGrath Labs Holiday 2022 collection, we have the new Quince, new to Lauren, Bronze Bliss. These arrived today, and it is Wednesday. I believe I ordered them on a Friday? The holiday collection has been sprinkling down. Maybe not great for those who just want to get everything at once because as new products are introduced, so are bundles, and it's like, well, I just couldn't have gone on everything at once, but that's okay, Pat. And at this time of filming, I believe tomorrow, which is Thursday, I can't actually tell will be the blush palettes now one of the blush palettes did become available on sephora but i didn't rush i was like i'll get there I'll get there. I did want it to grab the quince as this is the first five shadow pan palette that we have from Pat McGrath Labs. I did also film with the new Celestial Nirvana palette, the 18 shadow palette, which I think the star of the collection, definitely one of the most colorful palettes Pat McGrath has ever released. And I think appropriate for the collection to include something much more subdued, still in the eye shadow category. Unfortunately, one of my shadows from Nude Allure broke and apparently the quince feature a new formula i think it's a, a newer metallic formula that felt smoother so we'll get into those details but to quickly mention each of these quince retail for 36 dollars they are now currently available on patmcgrathlabs.com i'm sure perhaps they'll be available at sephora at some point don't know when currently you can buy these in a bundle that will equal to 65 dollars instead of 72 so you get a little discount there if you haven't already and we're thinking about it you could pick up the quince the mothership mega celestial nirvana palette as well as the mascaras those are in a bundle as well if you just wanted to get everything at once but i thought we can go over the swatches first and a few comparisons that i pulled out and then of course get into the looks and if you like pat mcgrath content and want to see more perhaps considering subscribing <laughs> maybe take a look first i have a rather large list of Pat McGrath videos and I did buy these myself I am on Pat McGrath Labs PR I do not know when I will receive it but all good I'm always happy to buy this palette does have a suggested shelf life of 12 months and is made in Italy. A quick note about the packaging. It is cardboard with a magnetic flap. Perhaps it was a possibility to see the mothership design replicated for the quint. Maybe that would have been too expensive because we do find it in the quads and some blush singles and highlighter singles. But perhaps because this is a limited release, the cardboard was the more efficient way to go. It is pretty sturdy considering that it is cardboard board and the actual pan lining is plastic first up we have nude moon a nude champagne metallic la vie et noir reminds me of la vie and rose a charcoal black matte very smooth i'll compare it to extreme black for uh context but i like how soft that is lunar luxury feels very soft in the pan and oh my goodness that is shiny whoa that's like super platinum perhaps i think this might be the newer formula featured in the quint and look at look at my finger there's still leftover from the swatch whoa bronzed mink as the name suggests little bronze here and i would say more on the neutral side not super cool so i think the undertone matches well with the other shades in the palette and lastly we have nude moon appears to be a warmer nude shade compared to the first one here Ooh, i like that it's more of a lighter bronze shade but happy that it's in here so you got a little bit of variety a, a little bit happy to report that the colors don't look as similar as they did online they all looked cool tone and like all kind of shades of champagne but there's more distinction here in the swatches next up we have nude allure have to be careful with my poor mahogany angel she got wrecked first up we have mercurial rose another metallic here Ooh, like a light pink rose shade i'm being careful with swatching mahogany angel 
very soft. This takes on a similar tone to what we've seen in many of Pat's quads. Coral Kiss. Coral metallic with some specks in there. Okay. Plum Eclipse. Similar texture to Coral Kiss. And lastly, we have Naked Bronze. Are we going to get a little shiny shiny from Naked Bronze? It seems to be the same finish as Coral Kiss, Plum Eclipse. Naked Bronze doesn't have, and none of these from Nude Lore have the same craziness found in Lunar Luxury. This has to be the standout shade out of both Quins. And Nude Lore, I think the colors are beautiful, but perhaps when we apply them on the lid, we'll get a little more shine from those three metallics. They are very pretty, smooth to the touch, and they have the sparkles throughout that metallic base. But I feel you're getting a lot more pizzazz in terms of reflectivity and shine from Bronze Bliss. A few comparisons I immediately thought of Mothership Sublime from the Six Pan series and Deep Velvet kind of reminds me of Mahogany... Mahogany Angel. This is Mahogany Angel for reference and going into Deep Velvet found in, or excuse me, I said sublime, subliminal, subliminal, next to my, oh my goodness, that's gonna give you a little, a lot more depth. Deep Velvet is like a shade, you know what I mean? And compared to Lunar Luxury, there is telepathic taupe from Mothership Mini Subliminal, but this is more of a traditional melted, metallic shade. It doesn't have the same shine and reflectivity as Lunar Luxury, but the texture is beyond smooth and one of my most favorites out of the Pat McGrath Shadow Texture Portfolio. That Smoke and Mirrors from the Mini Subliminal, I think such a unique shade. We have Ritualistic that has a little bit of lilac in there in the undertone and Platinize which is like the highlight shade of the palette, if you will. Now, funny, the smallest palettes Pat released were the six, six pan palettes. This was the first one. And then I think a few months back, she released the mini, 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 the official name Midnight Voyage. And it seems to always include some sort of like a, a purple like shade. So compared to, I believe it was, Memory. Plum Eclipse? Yeah. Plum Eclipse has that fuchsia type of undertone compared to this shade here. I believe Night Creature. Forgot Night Creature was in Midnight Voyage. It's shame on me. We have Night Creature next to Plum Eclipse, and Night Creature has a lot more fuchsia to it. It's a lot more electric in, in color. Compared to Amnesia, from what is the official name of this palette? I, I keep wanting to, to say Afterglow, but that's just the name of a shade in here. So this is Amnesia, a little more muted in undertone, but still in that plum category. Going back to uh, Mahogany Angel, I wanted to dip into the Divine Rose Quad. I believe it was Earthly Delight, but I think Earthly Delight had more of a, a mauve feel to it, a little lighter than Mahogany Angel. Yes, as suspected. So here we have Earthly Delight. This is Mahogany Angel. We still have, let me see here. We still have last year's quad, the Celestial Odyssey Luxe Quad in Bronze Borealis. This shade here, Mink Dusk, reminded me of Mahogany, Mahogany Angel. I might have to do one of these. So I'm gonna cut right in between. Ooh, Mahogany Angel has like a lot more rose mauve in there and Earthly Delight a little more cooler. I think we might have to dip into Moonlit Seduction one moment. You know what? I was wrong. I think I'm... Utopian Dream is the one with the Mahogany shade. This is Extreme Nocturne, which we could still put up against La Vie Noire. So here's Extreme Nocturne from Moonlit Seduction Mothership 10. I was gonna say five. <laughs> what is wrong with me? And now with La Vie Noire, that's like more of a charcoal type of a black shade. You know, for kicks, I wanted to hop in Divine Rose 2. I forgot about Extreme Burgundy. And then we'll get back to, let's see here. I'm running out of space. Ooh, 
Extreme Burgundy is more red than Mahogany Angel. And here we have Extreme Plum Noir from Utopian Dream. I'll place this on my palm as well. Let's see here. Huh. Similar. I'm going to put it up next to the actual Mahogany Angel shade. We're, we're getting a little tight here, but just so we can see. Yeah, Mahogany Angel has more depth to it, where Plum, Extreme Plum Noir has a little more plum. So if you want that contrast and depth just from a single shade found in the Quint, Mahogany Angel will give that smoke, but we'll find that out when getting into the demo. And finally, just hopping into Subliminal, all the first three Mothership palettes have Extreme Black in them compared to Le Vie Noir, which we have right next. So there you have it. Le Vie Noir has a lot more gray to it, not as black as Extreme Black. And here you have Extreme Nocturne and Extreme Dusk from my beloved Midnight Sun Mothership 6. I assume just by the swatch alone is going to have that brown blackened undertone compared to Le Vie Noir. So here are all my standout comparisons for the quince. I think it's great where Bronze Bliss is leaning more cool tone, bronzy, and then Nude Allure. Funny it's Nude Allure given the fact that they're like the coral plum shades in here. And from the swatches alone, if you want it like that shiny shine shine, then Lunar Luxury from Bronze Bliss will give it to you. The shades in Nude Allure don't have that same like reflectivity. And again, maybe we'll get something different when applied on the lid. But just so you know, all makeup I have on my face will... <laughs> Finger painting will be listed down below if you want to check that out. And since we have completed our product details, swatches, and comparisons, I think it's time for you to come in a little closer. <gasps> That's enough. Applying my Linda Halberg primer using the little mirror. You can see both eyes at the same time. Not great if you want it to do your whole face. You will have to scan up and down for a uh, the different parts. Hopping into Nude Allure first, let's take a, a gander at a Mahogany Angel. I'm being very careful because since my mat is crushed, whoa. Taking my Refer 27, a very fluffy blending brush. As I suspected, because the shade is broken, I think there's gonna be a lot more pickup than usual if it was just pressed. But as you can see, you can blend it out so it doesn't look as intense as I did. So that's a, a nice light application. And as I like to do with my mattes, just bring it out a little bit, just, just a tiny bit. And also placing a little more here on the outer V. And as you see, because I over blended a touch, no problem at all taking a concealer brush just to clean up the edges, just tapping here on the edge. Yeah, not a lot. Just, just a little, I don't know. This is a nice color. Definitely gives you smoke right away, but I suspect if you want it less that perhaps you will go in with one of the metallic shades first and just lightly brush the edges with the matte if you wanted a little more smoke. Let's see, what shall we apply on the lid? Well, I'm looking at Plum Eclipse and I'll use my finger as I think that will be one of the best ways to get the majority of the color on the lid. It has nice adherence. You can see the specks of sparkle in the color or in the metallic base, I should say. I'm tapping Naked Bronze on the outer V of my shadow. If you wanted to overlap these metallics, you could. And placing it over Mahogany Angel will darken the base a bit, right? So if you wanted a little more from Naked Bronze, just so it can have more depth on the outer V, then you can go that route. Mercurial Rose on the inner part of my eye for a little bit of highlight and just carefully overlapping that with Plum Eclipse so the gradient could look smooth. Mahogany Angel here on the lower lash line all the way through. I think, you know, it's a good way to go. And then Coral Kiss on the lower inner part of the lash line if you wanted to introduce another shade. So we've used all five shades on one eye look. And you can trail Coral Kiss over Mahogany Angel a little bit more if you wanted just like 
uh, more of that sparkle instead of the matte here. And with no additional product on my fluffer, taking the edges out a little bit more so it could have a little bit of that effect. Instead of going to Bronze Bliss right away, I think I'll create another look, but primarily, hmm, maybe using Coral Kiss as the main stage moment, and I'll place that first on the lid with my finger, and I'll tap it from inner to outer portion, not taking it too high just yet, and this is how it looks like by itself. Again, it has nice shine, and the texture is very smooth and buttery. It seems to have some emollients to the formula, which I feel makes it fairly easy to apply with fingers and brush, but it's not the same as the traditionally formulated metallic formula found in the six pan palettes, as well as Mothership 4 Decadence, where there's no sparkle in the base, it's just all molten metallic, which I think uh, better for blending because the edges look fine, but you will run into fallout, I feel, if you try to blend this texture with the fluffy brush. What you can do instead is take maybe a fluffy shader like I am now, this is the Refer One, not swirling and twirling, but tapping on and around the crease. So the color could naturally travel up higher and then kind of whisk out here when you get closer to your lash line, mimicking more or less that wing shape that I tried to create here with the matte. So you get more of a distinct shape from this texture. It doesn't look like you just plopped it down on your lid, but if you pounce your brush on and around the edges and kind of flick it out, you get more of like that shiny finish across the crease. If you're not crazy about that, I get it. I would just keep Coral Kiss lower on the lid, and then lightly, lightly whisk Mahogany Angel through the edges. But I wanted to take Mahogany Angel this time as a wing liner moment, and I'll place the majority of the color first on the lash line, and not focusing on creating the wing just yet, seeing how this color responds when placed on one of the metallics here. And you can see it. I think there's a distinction there. If you wanted to make it thicker, maybe take a, a shader brush that's flat on both sides so you could get a, a bigger stamp, but this is working out pretty well. And now I'll just lightly take the wing out, not a lot, just a little bit to show that there's a there. All right, not too bad. Liking that, we're liking that. And why not? Let's take Naked Bronze, the last metallic in the palette, as our prominent lower lash line shade. I think that's very pretty, yeah. And it's gonna, again, have that more scatter effect. It won't look as precise as if you were to apply a matte shade there. So if you didn't want a little bit of fallout, which naturally will happen because of the texture of the shadow, then maybe pounce it on instead of strike it on like I just did. And of course, Mercurial Rose on the inner corner here for our highlight. You could also play with Coral Kiss or even Plum Eclipse to be the highlight shade of your choice. And one last pounce of Coral Kiss on the lid here. And if you have your artistry wand, you can apply that first and then maybe these metallics on top and that will naturally provide a little more adherence and shine to the, the finished blend. Time for some lashes. We'll slap on a little lipstick and I'll be right back. Here are the final looks using Nude Allure. I think generally we can create these looks with shades that we already have in our existing Pat McGrath palette because there is always like a plum, coppery, coral shade in the midst of the collection as well as the bronze. Mahogany Angel I do love, but as you saw, we have a lot of mattes from our big mothership palettes that resemble the color. If you don't have any of the Mothership palettes or any Pat McGrath palettes at all, maybe this will be an opportunity for you to try out the brand's texture. Again, this metallic formula is slightly different from the one that already exists in her palettes and pretty good. I don't know what the distinct difference is. The only difference I can identify is that they have like a maybe a slightly more emollient feel to them, and you do see the sparkles inside the metallic base, but that will lead to better reflectivity, yeah? So when you see the light shine, I'm sure because of that, there's gonna be a lot more of a, a sparkle effect to the shadows when 
eventually they're gonna settle onto the lid. Mix a little bit with the oils that will naturally break through despite you wearing a primer. And I think throughout the day, the shadow will look beautifully soft and sparkly on the lid. So again, that is new to Lore. I think it's time to head into Bronze Bliss. Can't wait to see Lunar Luxury in action because that shade during the swatch would woo. Bronze Bliss. <sighs> Funny that Bronze Bliss is in the more plum colored palette, whereas the like beigey pink houses new to lore where new to lore has the plum eclipse and this uh, anyway anyway that was just an observation thanks for <laughs> traveling with me on my tangent Ooh, i don't know man i am dying to see how lunar luxury looks i think i'll apply a la vie noir first and if you are fearful in going in with this color first you can always apply like a loose powder first just to kind of diffuse the intensity of this this charcoal black i i think i'm gonna be all right so i'm just gonna go in very carefully in fact allow me to pounce color on first and then i'll go in for the swirl and twirl i did apply my lys concealer for primer this time around as when I remove shadow from my lids, my skin does become drier. So I was fearful that the shadows won't stick as well if I went in with my Linda primer again. Now that we've applied the shadow on the inner and outer parts of the lid, going in with a touch bit more. Now I could use a much smaller blending brush for this, probably, you know what? Let me go in with this one. This is like a dome shaped brush and it's going to have a little more control and precision, which would work in my favor considering that this is a very smoky look already, but the color itself is not super black. Again, it's like that charcoal black and very soft, especially if you decide to use a squirrel brush with this shadow as I am now before my fluffer was made out of undyed goat hair, so that will have more pickup. But if you want the shadow to move around more, that will be the best tool to use. So once I've applied the shadow where I want it to go, I'll then use my fluffy blender here to further refine the edges. And again, this is always the part that gets me. I try to wing it out, but sometimes, it, it you see that? I don't know what that is. I'm just... Okay, that's a little better. And now let me clean up a little bit here as I think that will just yield a much sharper result here. And then I'll go in again and stay above that angle. Now with Lunar Luxury, the super shiny shade. Okay, this this is shiny. My gosh, it looks like there's water on my eyeball. Kind of crazy. This is my Refer 21 designed to pick up sparkly, arkly textures such as Lunar Luxury. And once I have got the majority on my eye, I just tap around here and whoa. Super holiday, super holiday right now we're, we're going. And to make it look a little more cohesive, I'll lightly tap in the Le Vie Noir over the borders here not swirling and twirling because if you do that you will get specks from lunar luxury on your face so just be aware of that when you go tap it to tap for the refining you know there there might be some casualties so just use a light hand and take your time and now i'll bring down the levy noir here with a smaller brush just to kind of close the angle that we have here at the top. Nude Moon for our inner corner highlight. And the lighter bronze shade we have, Bronze Illusion, will be our inner corner lower lash line moment. I think that would be a nice choice as I want to use the deeper bronze shade for the second eye look as our standout lid color. I rarely do this, but I thought it appropriate for this look. Permagel liner in extreme black. On the top and bottom waterline, and then just kind of smushing all that together. Now with bronzed mink, starting off the other eye. Again, this had a more cooler kind of antique feel about the color. And much like I did with the first round, 
using Coral Kiss all over the lid. I will go back in with my shader and instead of swirling and twirling, I'll pick up a little bit at a time and tap it in and around the edges of my crease so as to not cause too much fallout, but rather just rely on the tapping here to shape the edges of this shade a bit better. And I actually had leftover Le Viennoir uh, on the bit of the brush. So you got a little bit of black there, which is fine. It's fine. It works itself out as all for the finished look. That's pretty. This color has like a nice antique feel to it. Nice depth if you didn't want to use the matte shade, but still wanted a smoky eye. Mm. And now why not? We could use Lunar Luxury as our inner corner highlight moment, which will be super shiny. So that's gonna have a nice feel about it when placed on the inner corner. I'll wrap bronzed mink on the lower lash line as well because I want to tap a little bit of bronze illusion on the center. So this is a lighter bronze shade, not overwhelming the skin, just tapping it a bit here on the mobile lid so it looks a little brighter if you wanted to increase that dimension. And of course, wanted to take a little bit of Le Vie Noir here on the lash line, just to kind of see it as a wing liner moment, or it could just be placed on the lash line for added intensity for mascara and or lashes. And then taking Permagel in shade on this side, all right, Lash is time and I'll be right back. And here is a final round using Bronze Bliss. I have to say between the two, I think Bronze Bliss with Lunar Luxury packs the most punch, perhaps the most impressive in my eyes in terms of experiencing the pizzazz of the newer formula. Lunar Luxury just having that beautiful shine and reflectivity. It looks like water when the sun shines on it and especially at night, it has that glistening effect. And I like the bronze shade as well. Just having bronzed mink all over this eye as the standout look and relying on the color and depth alone to provide a little bit of smoke, I think is a great way to go. Nude Allure is cool. I just think it has a lot of shades that already exist in the Pat McGrath portfolio. And I can argue the same thing with uh, Bronze Bliss, right? But in terms of the quince and the formula being like, wow, I think there is better performance from Bronze Bliss if you had to pick one out of the two. And if you tend to gravitate toward cooler shades anyway, if you feel new to lore is a little too warm, especially with the plum and coral shade in there, even if you just love Mahogany Angel, sure. But if you have the other Pat McGrath mothership palettes whether it be extreme burgundy or maybe uh, earthly delight from the divine rose quad the bronze shade from bronze borealis you know there th you could find a way I'm sure maybe natasha denona has like a shade like that in in a mat 100 so what i like about the quince is that i think they're far more accessible than let's say the mothership palette or even the six pan palette the trifold was a disaster as much as i love those shadows those palettes were always a pain to use i would have to do like a rubber band a trick where to hold the flaps out if i wanted to use the palette whereas this is just easier to travel with you have one flap you could hold it down it doesn't come up if you like the only thing because these shadows are rather delicate if you decide to bring this along to pack it well so it doesn't shake around in your makeup bag and i'm happy that pat mcgrath labs released two more neutral leading palettes in addition to mothership mega that houses the more vibrant mattes and metallics in there typically i would think one who would go with eyeshadow palettes that houses 10 or more would gravitate also to the more colorful shades and the sparkly finishes. Whereas one who would use a quad or even like the Viseur Petit Pro, I have this here on standby as a comparison, would probably get the quince over the Mothership Mega and makes sense that the quince have the more neutral leaning shades. Again, if you already own a bunch of Pat McGrath and you wanted to experience the newer formula, then I would get Bronze Bliss. I feel that it's tough to experience the newer formula in Nude Allure 
or only from the slightly more emollient feel from the shadows whereas you see just how crazy shiny lunar eclipse is so if you want to be super wowed by the finish then go for the bronze bliss quint instead i have both because i wanted to try both i have all of pat mcgrath's eyeshadow palette so i was going to buy both naturally but let me know what you think down below whether you think you need both or you don't need either of them. If you like one more than the other, I do really like Bronze Bliss a lot. And I'm surprised because I do love these shades, the plummy, like bronzy, rosy types of shades, but we have so much of those in Mother's portfolio that to have something cool bronze and especially with this type of shine is great for the holidays. I do plan to pick up her blush palette. I do wish the highlighter pan wasn't so large. It's like, how much highlighter can we possibly use and perhaps that is a silly statement considering that I do have two of her divine highlighter singles I get that but in a palette format I feel you should make most out of your space and to block out that huge region just for highlight I feel like maybe that could have been like two little squares instead of one I don't know or just have the blushes like she did with the blush trios we'll see I, I think I'll grab well I don't there are like two of them each one has a new shade and I have so many of the repeats with the Bridgerton collection. And also I think last year she released blush trios with repeat shades. So who knows, I'm trying to kind of like pump the brakes on the blush palette since I have the Hourglass palette and I have the Natasha Denona Dream palette cheek trio. I did not get the Patrick Ta, I just, no. I don't want it. We'll see. As I just said, I love to buy Pat McGrath and maybe I'll just bite the bullet and get both blush palettes. That's probably what I'm going to do. As well as the two highlighter singles or one highlighter single and one like blush type. There are so many things in this collection I, I nearly forgot. Again, friends, let me know down below what you think about both Bronze, Bliss, and Nude Allure, what you bought, what you didn't buy. I will see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel and until then i will see you on here again with another review tutorial pat mcgrath lab celestial nirvana holiday collection 2022 you never know or maybe just more blush take care and i will see you again soon